Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. It's Thanksgiving leftovers time. If you happen to have missed the first video where we unbox nine out of the 14 guitars from the complete original prototype collection. Well, let's just go ahead and dive into it today. You guys sold out the rest of the prototypes within three or four hours of me releasing that video. It was kind of funny. There were about 17 or 19 prototypes that just sat there for a day or two. So that really comes down to what I was saying last episode. I don't think Gibson advertised these things in now, I knew people would be interested in original collection prototypes. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and see which is the next one within our adventure here. I think we've got a couple of Les Pauls and uh, a couple of SGs today. And it appears that we are going to start it with an SG. Which is fine by me because original collection SGs are pretty darn cool. So let's open this guy up here. Which one did we get? Okay, this is the uh, SG Junior. So last time we did the Les Paul Junior and it kind of had an interesting finish. Now this guy, it just looks like a SG Junior, I guess you could say. We just reviewed a 2018 not too long ago. But this is the prototype, one of the very, very first ones that they made for the new and improved original collection. Now, there wasn't too much for them to prototype out of these guys, but it's mainly the historical significance of this new run. It's like Gibson, it's under new ownership. They're trying to do amazing things. So this complete collection of prototypes, man, like in 20, 30 years, I can't even imagine the value. I don't think I'll hold on to it that long. If the right offer comes, I'll definitely sell. But this one, uh, it, it just did stamp prototype. This one's made actually pretty late, the 35th day of 2019. And there's a little bit of wood figuring dancing. I mean, not a lot, not a particularly fantastic example, but I do like this little knot in the wood right there. That's kind of cool. I really like when a guitar has fancy wood grain or something unique that makes it identifiable to just that guitar. Because say somebody steals your instrument and they scratch your serial number out, they change all the parts or something, you'll still be able to identify your guitar by this little knot right there. So cool, just SG Junior. Don't think I need to re-review one of those, but it's part of the set. And speaking of the whole prototypes thing, so there's some people that are trying to start some conspiracy theories that these are not actually prototypes and Gibson is just getting really liberal with the prototype stamp. And I get it. I at first thought that too. Are they just stamping these weird random guitars as prototypes when they're not actually prototypes? But the way that you can tell that that's not true is, I mean, look at this right here. The serial number switched back to the year, day, 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 year, batch, what number in production it is in early 2019. All of these so far have been within the first month of 2019. That's not something they can fake. So that shuts down all theories because if it was like a factory second blemished return type model, they can't change the serial number. It's already been stamped on it. So even if these aren't actually the true, true prototypes, they're still marked prototypes or they're always going to be seen as the original ones, but they were at least one of the first ones ever made. And there's nothing that you can really do or say to deny that fact. But I do applaud them for being a little bit skeptical. It's always good not to just take things at face value. Always, you know, think about it. Make sure you're buying what you think you're buying. And in this case, I think I'm buying another SG here. Let's go ahead and get it open. It always throws me off. The SGs only have four latches. This time we have, ooh, the Pelham Blue SG Special. You know, this is actually a pretty good time to do what I've been wanting to do for a while. I still have this Epiphone SG Special P90 that we have to give away. And I told you guys I was going to do that after the review, but I think even though this is one of the best Epiphones I've had, I'm just going to can the review and we're going to give this thing away today. But do you guys see what I'm talking about now? How I said this finish was completely different. <laughs> you can see that side by side. I mean, this looks like an aged Pelham Blue in comparison. I mean, I prefer this color. I think they've knocked it out of the park on the Epiphones even more so than the Gibsons. 
So I wasn't crazy. That is a complete difference. And the winner of this Epiphone SG special goes to Jerry G. Remember, this one was picked from my uh, MailChimp list that people had to sign up for. So congratulations to him, but yeah, that's great that we could see them side by side. I never really planned on buying another one of these. So this guy, he was made on the 23rd day of the year. It's stamped prototype, because that was the other reason why people were a little bit skeptical, because the prototype stamp was definitely done after the paint. So maybe these weren't like the original prototypes, or they labeled them prototypes after the fact to help sell them because they knew that they were. But I think it's pretty obvious that that was done after the finish because you can tell it's kind of cracked in a bit right there. Oh well, what can you really do? As long as they are marked prototype and they were sent out by the factory. As far as us collectors are concerned, they are the original prototypes. Unfortunately, this is just a kind of a solid color, so not too much more for us to talk about this particular one, except for adding it to the collection of the original collection prototypes. But the next little topic that I would like to talk about for this unboxing is, hey, you guys bought out the shop, right? We've already established that, but they listed new stuff. And it's the first of the demo models. They're actually stamping them on the back of the headstock demo. That way they don't get the full factory warranty and people know that it was purchased not as a completely brand new instrument. These things still have some sort of a warranty. I think it's like two years for playability. I don't quite understand what that means. Like, does that mean if the neck twists, they will replace it for you? Or is that something else? I'm not quite sure. Maybe they talk about it in the manual, but they listed almost 50 additional guitars. I think about 49 of them because there were 50 original listings. And then at this point in time, they had 99 total. So it was like 49 of these demo models. It was kind of interesting to see some of the old like 2017 50s, 60s tribute studios. There were actually a few acoustics. I saw a couple of Firebirds even. And I think at the time of recording, there's like 30 or so of them left. So if you would like to check out the Gibson demo shop yourself, you can. I will put a channel supporting reverb link in the description that you can go through. Now, in my opinion, uh, I think all the good stuff's pretty well been picked through. It, they've kind of listed them at like what a dealer would list them at as like a semi what blemish guitar. So like one of those 50s or 60s standards, Sweetwater sells them for 2250. They had theirs for 2200 and it sold. But some of that other stuff, it's just kind of sitting. But you know, once again, maybe it's just because people didn't know to look. So I'll let you guys take a look at those things and decide if they are right for you. Because they're kind of cool anyways. It's a new thing that Gibson's doing. But people are curious if they're actually factory seconds. I think they might be because usually they have some sort of a small issue that would be keeping them from being sold as a first. Maybe they sent them to a dealer and the dealer sent it back for a reason. Other times, this just might be, you know, old stock that's been piling up that they never sold or was sent back to them. I don't know the full story. I don't want to throw around a bunch of rumors and stuff, but if it is like a factory second program, I think it's kind of cool because Gibson used to do that back in the 70s and 80s. It kind of cuts down on some waste. But there we go. <laughs> Oh, I hate to talk down to the guy who bought the other Cherry Sunburst, but I think I won this match. He had left a comment saying that oh, he saw them when they were first listed, he slept on it, he came back and he purchased it. And it's at that point when I freaked out because I thought a bunch of other people were going to buy all the other stuff. But thankfully, another Cherry Sunburst 50 standard was listed. And I think this one had a much better top. I guess I'm kind of glad that I got to wait on this one. But technically, in the long scheme of things, he did get the first one that was listed. And maybe he got better wood grain. I honestly don't remember what that one looked like. This one, not too much figuring in the back. Nothing too much in the neck. But this top. This is the kind of top I like. I like it when it's a little bit wavy. But then again, if you like those really hard pinstripe flamey lines, maybe that other one would have been better. But I'm just happy I was able to get one of each of the colors of the standards. That's definitely the 50s cherry sunburst. And this prototype was made on the 28th day of the year. But I've got to say, that fretboard is fantastic. It's really dark, but you can tell it hasn't been conditioned in a while. So that'll look great once we do that. It looks like we get all that regular case candy in here. Cool, cool, cool. I'm I'm really liking the tops that I got on all these. Even that unburst that I was saying that I didn't really like last episode. You know, whenever I look at it, 
after not looking at all the other guitars, it's like, okay, yeah, that's a nice guitar. And that's what I was trying to say. It's kind of the runt of the litter as far as the finish goes. The top is actually pretty nice. But it looks like we are down to two instruments here and we are severely running out of room in this room. But hey, speaking of the new demo models, I think what would behoove Gibson to improve their reverb listings they take such glamorous shots. I like their little see-through stand. It makes it look like it's just magically standing there. But when these guitars have issues, they just kind of leave them in a bulleted list, which I think is great. It's easy to know what's wrong as long as you're looking at it. But they don't seem to ever take photos of the blemished areas. Like, they say that there's a jam on the neck. What's a jam? Are they talking like a big ding? Is there a little chip? I think it'd be great if they could uh, just take a little bit more time to get them to take some photos of that so people know what they're buying. Because I think that might be hurting them on some of these non-prototype sales. I mean, a prototype is a prototype. So if a prototype has a little bit of a prototypal ding, people are still gonna buy it because it's a prototype. And speaking of prototypes, how many times can I say prototype? <laughs> we get another SG. And this is actually going to be a duplicate color SG. And I'm really excited to see this in person, I believe, for the first time. Inside here. Nice. Sparkling burgundy SG special. Oh my. Are you guys seeing this fretboard? Jeez, I love it. This is like a keeper instrument right here. I mean, since it's a painted guitar, you can't really get too much wood grain stuff going on, but you do get the beautiful finish that all these pretty well have in common. The back of the neck, hey, at least they didn't completely destroy the prototype stamp on this one. Unlike that blue guitar, this was made the 23rd day of the year. But as I was saying, take a look at this fretboard. It's got, it's, it's like super dark, but there's like this nice red streaks in it. It really complements this finish. Like if I was shopping at Sweetwater for a review and demo model of this guitar, this would be one I'd be like, yes, that's a special example. Super pumped. I think out of everything I've unboxed so far, this has to be my absolute favorite example for this particular episode. I mean, if you count the nine that we did last time, I think this one's definitely within my top three. Maybe even my second after that Ice T60 standard. That thing is just fantastic too. But that fretboard on this finish of a guitar, nice. I'm really happy with this purchase. And these SG specials are pretty good. Now, if you want to see a review and demo of the Gibson SG Special, the one video that I do have on my channel, it's a little bit misleading because I did that demo before these things came out. So I think I'm reviewing like the 2018 or like the early 2019 version. And that's back when they had the PCB systems in it. So it wasn't all hand wired and stuff like that. So sometimes I get comments on that video. They're like, I thought this was supposed to have hand wired pots. It's like, yes, but no. And our last little snippet of a topic here. When does the Gibson demo shop restock? I don't think we're 100% certain at this point in time. Judging on what they just did, you know, after my video came out, everything sold out. Then 50 additional listings came. Maybe they're waiting for every batch to sell out or at least come very close to it, like only have a couple of listings left and then they'll restock it. So I think A, that's a good time to watch it while they're kind of clearing out their big bulk of inventory anyways. But maybe it's just, you know, whenever this team actually has time to look at these things, take the photos, make the listings and all that. So I guess you just kind of have to keep your eye out. I definitely will be because, you know, Cesar was telling me they're refinishing some of these guitars. Or maybe he just meant refinishing as in refinishing, like finishing them with other parts. Because there was that one SG that had non-original pickups in it. I think it was like a 2017 standard T. I don't think those things came stock with a double black and a zebra pickup, but I guess I could be wrong. I wasn't really paying attention in 2017, but I dig this stuff. I think it's fun. I think it's great that they're trying something new, you know, getting on the reverb bandwagon. I think it would have looked better for Gibson if they would have done that back when reverb was 
you know, musician owned and not Etsy owned, but I guess they could have done this on eBay, but a big corporate shop selling on eBay it doesn't sound as professional as a reverb, but hey, you can actually find Fender selling stuff on eBay. Sweetwater does it, so I don't think there's anything too bad in that. So what is the last original collection guitar? Let's find out. It's a 50s gold top. So far, we have not had any damaged guitars on this run. So two out of a 14 total. And uh, that switch tip, they said they can send me one. Still kind of waiting back on that other one that had the slight finish crack. I don't really think they're going to be able to do anything for me because the other prototype had already sold. But this, you know, if you dig gold tops, you can get this. Or I think uh, 2021, they're finally going to be releasing the slash gold top. So if you'd rather have those slash specs, you can wait for that. But that was kind of a special episode for me doing that leaked slash prototype because that's the first time that I actually uh, talked to Cesar through uh, email and he kind of set me up with the Gibson Artist program. So that kind of helps me get some of these guitars for review and demo. I still had to buy them, but I do get a slight discount. Not on these guys. Unfortunately, the reverb shop doesn't count for that. Honestly, it's not that much better than what I was getting from Musician's Friend and stuff. So it's not that big of a difference. I'm still always going to tell you guys the truth and how I feel about the guitars. But this guy, he's a prototype. Prototype built on the 25th day of the year, 2019. And that is the last of the complete original collection. It really pains me that they have not listed the Sideways SG Vibrola one yet, because that is the only thing that's missing. So um, I guess we'll have to see what they do, because there's gotta be modern collection prototypes, because the Les Paul Modern was something completely new. I had some people saying that, uh, Hey, what about the Explorers? What about the Flying Vs, the Firebirds? In my opinion, I don't think they even changed those things for the original collection. That was just kind of a, a rebranding of names. So it would not surprise me at all if we never see prototypes of those guys show up. Or maybe they just haven't listed them yet. That's kind of the thing with this shop. You never know what is going to come up. So I guess... I'll just have to keep watching it, but as of right now, we need to do some glamorous beauty shots with all these guys together.
All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed our two-part Thanksgiving episode feast guitar unboxing crazy shenanigans stuff. I've got so many Gibson boxes, I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> Probably pack these things all up and just store them. If you're interested in the whole collection, you can uh, contact me. I'll probably do this big listing on Reverb. It'll get some attention. But now that all the prototypes are sold out, I can feel just how special these things are now. So I think this was a, a great investment on my part. And I hope you guys enjoyed getting to look at all these guitars. Thank you, Troglodytes, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.